Hey there. So basically, I'm running um, the iPod with Touchable. And basically, I, I use this um, for just being able to see kind of where I'm at because I, I mainly use the APC to run um, the clip launching and the effects and all that type of stuff. But because APC doesn't have the names of the clips, it's easy to get lost. So having that to check with actually helps quite a bit for me. And obviously there's a, a number of other things. I can, I can launch clips that are not within the uh, APC 40 grid. So APC 40 right down here. Sorry, I can't really move the camera on my iMac. And then I was uh, just doing a little bit of live stuff in with my tool that uh, puts everything in the correct key. Then I just kind of use uh, the keyboard here. And that's pretty much uh, my live setup. Now, I, I usually do these performances with a partner, and he'll be running um, a Behringer VCR2000 and, and just his laptop, so we, we just sync up the laptops. That's pretty much the setup, so I hope that answers your question for the most part. All right, so the way that this works, these are all bits and pieces of, uh, of songs that I've produced or remixed myself. Except for just, there's just a couple exceptions where I need to go from one key to another and I don't have a song that, that yet does that. But everything else for the most part is all my stuff. And the way that I break it down is I break it, uh, the songs down into six different parts. So I've got my drums, bass, vocals or percussion uh, type thing, pads, a lead or main part, and effects. And then seven and eight are um, are usually what I'll put like full tracks on and things like that, because sometimes just just moving from one loop to the next loop, you kind of uh, lose that intensity or the build that you have in a song that you've produced. So sometimes it makes sense to uh, blend the original song parts with some other uh, ad libs that you're doing live, like this cluster of clips here. This this would be one song here. This here is a, an unfinished song that's just kind of a loop. And then it goes into the next song. So basically the key of this, this is a 2B, this first song. And then I usually have a transition at 3B. And then this goes to 4B, which brings me to 4A, which is this remix that I did here. I've got a couple other songs in different keys that I kind of ad-lib with, with these parts here. And then as I move to uh, this song here, it mixes in key with, with uh, this kind of groove. This isn't really quite a song yet, but it's a groove. And then this song here, which are both um, 7A. So if you use mixed in key, you'll understand what I'm talking about as far as the numbers. And with my uh, instrument, I've actually got the correlation between the key and the number that would be on the mixed in key wheel. And what I've what I've done with, with my mixed in key instrument is I've dragged it in and then I kind of separated all the harmonizing parts for each section. So if I want to throw a loop in on the fly, all I gotta do is you know click a key that works with what's already playing. And then when I hit this loop. Oh, sorry, let me, uh, let me turn this on here. So that's playing in 2A, so that will actually work with, for example, this. Okay, so anyway, so that, that's, a, that's good for me to be able to add some, some interesting 
random uh, loops and stuff, running through delays and things. And basically, I've got I've got three three sends, so I can run stuff either through a quarter note delay, that's a real long delay. I've got a filter delay, where basically I just run run everything through a, a simple delay, and then um, I add kind of a a filter with an LFO to give it some movement. And I do something similar here with a long reverb and a filter delay. It kind of makes things sound like uh, like filter sweeps and stuff like that. Um, and you can, it, it can make uh, melodic parts or whatever. I want to sound kind of washy and like strings. And it's a great way to kind of get rid of something, you know, and let it kind of fade out uh, nice and long. And then on each track, I also have an auto filter so that I can filter each track. So that way the bass, basses aren't fighting with each other when all the different parts are going. That's pretty much how, how I set it up. I, I like to keep things fairly simple, you know, so that I can focus more on, on the songs and the parts and, uh, and the arrangement and things like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and uh, I'll do it again soon. All right, guys, take it easy.